welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is surviving this intense journey of parenthood um, or taking deep breaths when needed. Uh, today I really want to talk about toys um, and just kind of give you a different perspective, not a minimalist um, perspective of how less toys is definitely less cleanup, less chaos in your home, um, but more just a developmental standpoint on why less is definitely more when it comes to toys. So just a reminder, I am a parent. I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, I also am a developmental interventionist, so I provide services to kiddos birth to three years old who qualify for special education and I go into their home. So this is a topic that I am consistently bringing up to my families and the caregivers of the kiddos that I work with. Okay, so I just wanna start off by unpacking the word or the meaning of play um, and just kind of explain why this is so important for our littlest learners. Um, so play is really those sensory, physical, cognitive experiences that we're giving our kiddos that are really building those connections in their brain while it is so rapidly growing. When we talk about play, that can look a lot of different ways. There is social play where we're playing peekaboo or chase or singing songs together. Um, physical play where you're outdoors at the park, on the slide, on the swing set, digging in the sandbox. Um, and then obviously there is play with toys or objects. Um, and that's kind of where I want this video to be focused. Again, just kind of giving you reasons why less toys could be developmentally appropriate. Okay, so the reason for this video really comes from my own personal experiences, but again, just kind of what I talk families through on a daily basis. So many of us have too many toys available to our kids. Um, we have often play rooms. Um, I went from a play room to play closets, um, which I now am on to play bucket, which I am going to get into much more detail later in this video. So I just want to outline three reasons why I feel like less toys can be more, um, with the first being providing boredom. Um, I know this sounds a little strange, but boredom is one of the greatest gifts that we can give our kids. Um, it almost forces their creativity and their imagination to come alive. Uh, so providing the opportunity to not always be stimulated by us or by many options of toys really creates that boredom, which again creates that imagination. The second benefit to really having less toys available to your kids is that this can really help increase their focus and their attention span while they're playing. When they don't have so many options, again, they're almost forced to play with toys for longer periods of time and really put some effort into what they're doing with those toys. Finally, the last benefit that I want to outline in this video regarding less toys is the ability for us as adults to have more focus and for us to be able to provide more purposeful, repetitive play sequences. By doing so, we can really model how to play with toys um, in different ways and in functionally, but we can also incorporate some of those really language-rich environments with the simple repetitive phrases. So I hope you're still with me and I have convinced you that less toys is really more developmentally appropriate for your kiddos. Um, I kind of want to talk through what I did. Um, as I mentioned before, I had a playroom um, in which I just really no longer think is a great idea at all. Confining kids to one room along with all of their belongings and their toys just really doesn't make much sense. I really want to allow my kids to explore their environment. Um, and be creative with their toys in different rooms of the house. So I went from this playroom, um, converted it into a couple play closets in which I would rotate toys out of that, to finally now ending up into toy buckets in which again I rotate every week to two weeks depending on my kiddo's interest. Before I get into sharing what types of toys I have in those buckets, I just want to make it really clear that it's important that you kind of go through your kiddos toys every once in a while and make sure what they have in there is really developmentally appropriate for their age. 
Um, I want to talk specifically about cause and effect toys. So you push the button or your kiddo pushes the button, it lights up, it moves, it sings. These toys are great for our infants. Um, you know, it really allows them to kind of explore their world when they don't have as many movements um, as older kiddos. Once we kind of hit that 9 to 12 month age, these toys really are not as developmentally appropriate as they just do too much, which then encourages our kiddos not to do as much. We want them to kind of maneuver the toys and make the toys move and to sing and to be the voice of the toy um, as they get into those older ages. So just keep that in mind as you are doing a clean out, getting prepared for less toys. shared with you my befores and afters and it probably doesn't look as good as it surely felt um, but just to give you an idea of these toy buckets that I am now using um, so I just kind of want to go through what I have put into each bucket so you can get an idea of what I kind of lay out each week and again rotate these as your child's interests kind of indicate okay so in each bucket I normally have a problem solving toy which can be jigsaw puzzles, chunky puzzles, um, shape sorters, matching cards, and you will see in my bucket I have a jigsaw and a chunky puzzle again just so that one is developmentally appropriate for my older kiddo who's three and one that is one. Um, then I also include some imaginary play toys so in this particular one I think I had some police cars and fire engines and a station as well as some musical instruments and a, and a train. Um, so just something that they can be creative and imaginary with, um, but also that I can model some of those sequences of play. So the fire engine might drive on the track, put the fire out, and park in the garage. I also include a stacking toy, um, normally a stacking ring or some blocks. Um, something that they can build with, the magnetic tiles, I really like those, um, Legos, so anything really that they can kind of, again, be creative and build. So you will see that I also rotate my books. Um, I'll have five or six books in each bucket, and again, this just really kind of gives them that variety so they're not choosing the same book over and over, um, and we can just kind of learn different language or provide different languages and experiences for them. All right, guys, we've talked a lot about toys. Um, I hope it was helpful for you all, and I just want you to go away with one more thing today, and that is just remember that you are the biggest, most important toy that your kiddo can have, way more than any store-bought toy, so interactions with you are far and beyond what a store-bought toy can give them. I hope you, again, enjoyed, and please, I always welcome any feedback or comments. Um, please be kind. This is just my opinion, and I'm hoping that it helps. Um, and thank you again for visiting.